This news is funded by viewers like you. Please support our work at democracynow.org. Slash give. As we continue to look at last night's CBS News vice presidential debate, we turn to the issue of abortion. This is Republican Senator J.D. Vance. Now, of course, Donald Trump has been very clear that on the abortion policy specifically, that we have a big country and it's diverse. And California has a different viewpoint on this than Georgia. Georgia has a different viewpoint from Arizona. And the proper way to handle this, as messy as democracy sometimes is, is to let voters make these decisions, let the individual states make their abortion policy. And I think that's what makes the most sense in a very big, a very diverse, and let's be honest, sometimes a very, very messy and divided country. Governor, would you like to respond and also answer the question yeah. about restrictions? Yeah, well, the question got asked and Donald Trump made the accusation that wasn't true about Minnesota. Well, l let me tell you about this idea that there's diverse states. There's a young woman named Amber Thurman. She happened to be in Georgia, a restrictive state. Because of that, she had to travel a long distance to North Carolina to try and get her care. Amber Thurman died in that journey back and forth. The fact of the matter is, how can we as a nation say that your life and your rights, as basic as the right to control your own body, is determined on geography? There's a very real chance had Amber Thurman lived in Minnesota, she would be alive today. So that's Walls. Before that, J.D. Vance, Amy Littlefield is abortion access correspondent at The Nation, independent journalist who covers reproductive health. Joining us from Boston, your response to this discussion and the stance of these candidates. I thought it was so powerful, Amy, to hear Amber Thurman's name from the debate stage, right, two weeks after ProPublica published the report that this young mother had had to travel to North Carolina for an abortion. She'd suffered a complication that's rare when she was back home in Georgia. And because the state of Georgia had made the simple procedure that would have saved her life a felony, she died and left behind a six-year-old child. Um, you know, Walls also could have mentioned Candy Miller, who Re ProPublica reported who had died with her three-year-old daughter by her side after suffering the same rare complication in, in a state that, that banned abortion at six weeks. Worth noting, Amy, by the way, that a judge in Georgia just this week struck down the state's six-week abortion ban as unconstitutional, the law that killed Amber Thurman. Um, you know, I have to say, Amy, watching this debate, I felt like I was in a nightmare version of my high school sex ed class, watching, you know, Coach Tim Walls chastise the uh, smug kid in the back of the room who had gotten caught copying off of his classmate's paper. Because what J.D. Vance seemed to be doing in this debate, and frankly, he was very good at it, is trying to uh, co-opt the Democratic talking points that sometimes on, a, on abortion and trying to make his stance look moderate, um, because quite frankly, his own hardline position on abortion has flunked with the American people. Um, you know, he got everyone from Taylor Swift and beyond mad at him. And, you know, cats and women, we don't forget, Amy. We know where J.D. Vance stands on abortion. Um, we know that he spent his Saturday hanging out with leaders of the new apostolic reformation, a far-right strain of Christianity that believes that people like you and I, who espouse anything that looks left-leaning, are literally infested with demons that need to be vanquished through spiritual warfare. This is the kind of company that J.D. Vance keeps. But I'm going to say probably the most terrifying words ever, ever said on, on this program before, Amy, which is J.D. Vance sounded good at trying to convince us that he was more moderate than he actually is on the issue of abortion. Um, because unlike Donald Trump, J.D. Vance seems quite skilled at code switching. And I have to say, I think the three most frightening words that J.D. Vance said from the debate stage were, I am 40, OK? Unlike Donald Trump, not only is he good at code switching and hiding what he actually believes, but J.D. Vance is going to be with us for a long time. Um, yeah, I wanted to go to uh, something that was on Vance's website. In July, Jennifer Bendery, the senior politics reporter for HuffPo, tweeted a screenshot from Vance's Senate campaign website before it was wiped that described his views on abortion under the all-caps title, End Abortion. That was on his website. It read, in part, eliminating abortion is first and foremost about protecting the unborn, but it's also about making our society more pro-child, more pro-family. The historic Dobbs decision puts this new era of society society into motion, one that prioritizes family and the sanctity of life. And then last night, Trump tweeted during and after the debate, 
and it seems like it's the first time he said this, I would not support a federal abortion ban under any circumstances, would in fact veto it, because he wants the states to decide. Your response? Right. I mean, we know that Vance has said he's sympathetic to the idea that a national abortion ban would be needed to prevent women from traveling out of state in order to seek an abortion, right? We know that Vance has said of rape and incest exceptions that two wrongs don't make a right. We know, you know, that he is hardline when it comes to being anti-abortion. We know, we know the strategy here because they wrote it down. It's in a more than 900-page document called Project 2025 that talks about the need to ban abortion nationwide, not using an act of Congress or the people, but using the 1873 Comstock Act um, and, and reviving that as a de facto ban on mailing abortion pills. So, you know, we have to look at the strategy here and not get distracted by the slick talking points. And finally, this all happened yesterday. Well, Louisiana um, instituted the first in the nation law that bans abortion medications, calling them dangerous. And they are used for a number of different issues. The significance of this in 15 seconds. I mean, we have to look at the recent report from Pregnancy Justice that found that there was a record high number of instances of pregnancy-related prosecutions over the year after the Dobbs decision, at least 210. So this is a collision of the war on drugs um, with anti-abortion mm -hmm. policies that always affects low-income people and the most marginal people first. Amy Littlefield, abortion access correspondent at The Nation, an independent journalist who covers reproductive health. That does it for our show. Democracy Now! will be doing a four-hour election night special on November 5th, followed by a two-hour morning show the next day. Democracy Now! produced with Mike Burke, Renee Feltz, Dina Guzder, Messiah Rhodes, Nermeen Sheikh, Tammy Warrenoff. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us. Democracy Now! is funded by viewers like you. Please give today at democracynow.org slash give.